September 25th, 2016. It's a lock. My lesson today is entitled, He'll Work It Out. And this lesson is just a reminder to us all who are trusting in the Most High that He does have a plan to work out the different things in our lives. So we're really supposed to be trusting Him. Sometimes we run ahead and we get tired of what we're dealing with so we try to fix it and then you got strange situations as well where sometimes things aren't going wrong per se but sometimes we just run ahead and make some changes to try to make things better than they really are because in some cases we're doing better than others around us and end up making choices that don't fit well with the Most High. And, you know, sometimes you're going to know that these are bad choices, might I say. When you really feel that check in your spirit and uh, different things are just lining up in a way that makes you feel very uncomfortable with what's going on. And uh, you just rush ahead. You don't give enough uh, consideration to what's going on. And next thing you know, things get worse later on. It might be nice at first, but eventually it changes. But this is just a lesson just to remind us because, you know, we're all going to make some mistakes sometimes, some choices, even the smartest of us, that later on we're going to say, I wish I didn't, right? But we just have to learn what it really is to trust the Most High. And that's by reading from His Word. Be daily in that Word. And then you will learn how our forefathers trusted in the Most High, right? And the Most High is going to speak to you through that as you learn continually over the years. So, He'll work it out. It's better if He does. Don't try to just always push a blessing through and try to force it. If you really feel the Most High doesn't want you to go that route. You see, your your feelings are really important in this life. If you really feel to hold back, sometimes you might want to really just go with that feeling until, you know, maybe you get some more information on whatever it is you're dealing with or you can get some consideration from some people around you who really care about you and might have some more understanding on that part of life in that decision that you're trying to make. So you can make a better decision. Sometimes just kick back and wait a little bit and see how things move first, if you're able to wait, right? Now, I don't have, and none of us is going to have all the answers for every situation in your life. We can't even answer all the things in our own lives, right? But it's just a reminder that sometimes, in some cases, we're going to avoid some pretty bad things, some some real mistakes if we can learn to slow down a little bit more and not always rush just because something looks shiny and good. Let's look here in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 18 and 19. And this is dealing with, of course, Samuel and uh, him talking about with, with Israel about this whole matter of them wanting a king. See, the most I didn't want Israel to have a king, Right? He's like, um, you know, I mean, just because a lot of kings came later on and the Most High blessed them, it's it, it doesn't mean that he really wanted that, right? So he's just saying here to Israel, that's Samuel, I mean, that you guys are pushing for the wrong thing. The Most High has been taking care of you all along. When you had no king, why are you pushing for a king? But as good as things were, in terms of the Most High coming through and delivering them and so on, which is only because of their transgressions, then, you know, as good as things were, they're like, oh man, we don't like this. Why? Because this unseen force of not seeing the Most High in front of them, sitting on a chair that they would call a throne, they're like, okay, yeah, we know he's coming through, but I don't know, we just feel more comfortable if we could see somebody, you know? We want to be like the other nations, right? And uh, they they shouldn't have gone that route. 
and I'm going to show the problem with them trying to work it out that way to have a king like them later on when we look at the life of Adam in the garden, right? First Samuel 10, verse 18 to 19, And said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Most High Power of Israel, I brought you up, Israel, out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms of them that oppressed you. See, if the Most High was sending deliverance that was hit and miss, and only sometimes they were delivered, then maybe you could stretch it and say, all right, okay, I can see why they're pushing for a king now, because, you know, but uh, he delivered them out of all kingdoms. So you would feel that as people, we would do the math and say, okay, he delivers us every time out of all kingdoms from all our enemies this is not a hit and miss god but the encouragement comes to us today in this lesson because as people sometimes we just get so flaky and so miserable with what's going on and so scared of what's going on that even when things do work out properly we're just scared of having to have some faith next time we're scared of having to trust next time so we want something more solid instead of trusting and, and having faith in the most high we want something that can just we can just press a button and it just works itself out so you eliminate the need for trust and faith and relying on the most high right and that's how this world is it sets up all these machines and technology and the way of life so that it does not need the most high they, so that they can work out life on their own right no wonder it says those who trust in chariots and horses and so on, right? But David's saying, I will trust in the name of the Most High. That's the name I'm going to remember because that's what brings deliverance and hope and satisfaction. But they're like, no, we want to trust in something we can see. Give us a man who can run some meetings back door and strategize and plan whatever, right? It's because they wanted to continue sinning. They weren't fully changing their heart. Because if they weren't going to be transgressing anymore, worshipping Moloch and the other gods of the other nations, they wouldn't need that king. But because in their heart they still wanted to continue worshipping idols and doing these wicked things, then they knew they were going to enter back into some more problems with other nations. And they knew then they want a king to fight right away. Because you know when you're crying out to the Most High, it's going to take you some time, right? Sometimes it just takes some time, right? As the Most High is like, well, if you didn't want to be in that problem, you shouldn't have gotten into that problem. Right? So they're like, no, if we have a king, that king will fight right away. Why? Because they still planned on committing transgressions. So their heart was not, their heart wasn't changed, right? So it's basically, they're crying out for a king because of a heart problem. No wonder the Most High is saying in the end he's going to give us a new heart because he knows the problem is with our heart, right? It's our heart. And that's why I don't understand this whole 2,000-year-old uh, Mashiach thing because you can get salvation from somebody who supposedly died for you on a cross, but your heart still hasn't changed because look how many of us came to this Mashiach now as Hebrews or in the Christian church being baptized and we still committed so many sins, we hated each other, we did this, did that. Why? Because no death on the cross changes your actual heart. So the power of Calvary is weak. Calvary wasn't a solution. In the end when the Moses says, I'm going to give them a new heart, that is the solution. 1 Samuel 10 verse 19. So he said, okay, he delivered them out of all the nations that oppressed them. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself, himself, not his son or something like that. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us, now, therefore, present yourselves before the Most High by your tribes and by your thousands. So they're pushing for this king because they don't want the Most High to work it out. They want to work it out themselves by setting up their own king who's going to 
do whatever for them to help them to work it out and then what will they do just continue transgression because they got a king that will fight for them and defend them and what if that king ends up winning in battle against a nation that's coming to to you know coming after them because that nation sees them on the same plane as them so what if that king who ends up being Saul beats the other nation at first then the people will have no need to change. Israel will just continue to sin because we don't got no reason to change. Saul so kicked their ass, so we'll just continue to worship Moloch because we got protection now. It's dangerous when you can be protected to continue your sin. So in order to prevent that, the most sides like, no, let me work it out. Because when you have to trust me, you're going to walk right. So what we find here is something interesting though. That sometimes you can run ahead with a decision trying to work things out on your own. And because it seems like you've worked it out and things are going well, you feel that that was a good thing. But not always. Look over your life and think of all the things that you did. And it seemed good, but later on it turned out into a disaster. One quick, or, or two quick examples is, would be like a marriage. You think, oh, this person was so it. And then later on, it's like, God, please get me out of this marriage. Right? But you thought this was a person. Some cases people are telling you, no, 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 no. But you went ahead like, God gave me this person. Right? And look at it now. You're no longer together, right? So it goes to show that in this life, I'd always doing something that seems to you to be the best doesn't necessarily guarantee permanent blessings where that decision is concerned. Let the Most High work it out. By not always forcing things through or not always going by your emotions of course sometimes you're gonna have your emotions be a part of it but sometimes you gotta check it and see am i feeling emotionally great about this thing because that's common sense and that's the best way to go and it ag agrees with torah and it agrees with the common sense of my friends and so on around me and agrees with the common sense of the scripture and even the common sense of history Or am I just feeling good about this because that's just how adrenaline makes people feel at first, right? So you got to check things. Another example is sometimes a, a business deal that you just rush into so fast, right? And it just doesn't work out. You felt great at first, but you didn't check everything out properly. And in the end, you lost so much money and last a lot of time as well sometimes we got to pull back check things out don't be so quick all the time right sometimes check things out watch how things play out a little bit more and then you make your decisions right while you're still praying about it as well so sometimes things might be well you might have you might have even a business person who say they have all kinds of knowledge about this and yeah, yeah, go do this man and so on. But if you somehow get some kind of a check inside of you that says, wait, maybe they're pushing too much for me to do this. You should try to pay attention to that feeling and say, ah, oh, maybe I need some time to think about this. It don't matter how experienced they are. If you feel something is not quite right, pull back. It doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to do it in the end. Pull back and check yourself. And ask the Most High, why am I feeling this way? Then start digging through the scriptures and see if something pops up to you. Talk to some people around you, your family or friends. Go do some more research on the matter. And try to find out why you feel this way. And then make your decision while you put it before the Most High, right? And allow Him to work it out. So sometimes it looks good. Someone even anointed might be present. But if you're feeling a check all along, it could possibly mean that it's not the way to go. That the Mosai wants to work things out a different way. 
And here's a precept for that. Well, the precept is this whole chapter, chapter, first time chapter 10, 11 and 12, which I'm going to read a few more verses from, right? But basically, if we look at it here, we see, which like I said, I'm going to read here in a moment, that Samuel was involved in setting up Saul to be king. Right? This man Saul was, was called, anointed now to be king. And Samuel the prophet was present, anointing him, right? And presenting him before all Israel. Even though the prophet was present, a great prophet like Samuel, even though a prophet was involved, it was not the desire of the Most High for them to go that route. And you think because your leader or your pastor says, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're feeling something is wrong and you see some common sense reasons in scripture or in life, why this is probably not the best choice right now. It could be better choice and timing later, but not right now. Even though a pastor is involved, you'd better pay attention to that feeling in you. You see, people on the outside can tell you all kinds of things. But if your own self is telling you, hold up, back up, you better listen to you. Because in the end, if it goes wrong, you're going to be the one paying the price. You're going to be the one staying up at night, holding your head, sitting at the edge of the bed, wondering what's going on. How am I going to deal with this? Don't let people push you into things you are not ready for. But let the Most High, with His timing, and strategy work it out so Israel with all its kings became captive and scattered went into different captivities and here we are today in 2016 we're captives scattered just because a prophet anoints a king and just because there were different kings that the Most High was working with throughout Israel's history in the Old Testament doesn't mean that it was the way that the Most High wanted it to go initially. So here we are after all those many kings, we're still in captivity. Because like I said earlier, it's not having a king, it's a heart problem with Israel. So you're trying to fix the problem of your heart by having something external, a king. You might be trying to rush into a decision to fix this stuff that's going on in your life with something external. When maybe the Most High is trying to deal with you in a different way and call you into a different route in life, in a certain area in your life. And if you can't go with what the Most High is prompting you to do and the path he's prompting you to walk down, but you choose something else, it's a hard problem. And you might end up just paying a price for that later on. And look how Saul's life ended. A prophet like Samuel involved in anointing and setting up Saul because the people pushed for Saul as pushed for a king. But still look how even Saul's life ended. Israel got the first king they wanted, ended up into Assyrian and Babylonian captivity, and here we are today. And that first king that they got Saul, his life ended in a miserable day until David was like exacting kind of like you know giving punishment for that what kind of message is this you're giving to me about how Saul died even after Saul died there's still people around David trying to deal with the case right so if you really feel the Most High wants you to hold back a little bit and, you know, others around you are hinting that it might not be a good idea in that particular area, then sometimes you might just want to pull back, right? And sometimes you might get the blessing, but it might seem like a strange blessing. They got that king, Saul, but it was a strange blessing because the Most High showed that, yeah, I'm going to pronounce a curse on this man's life, Saul, because he didn't do all that I said. The first king wasn't even there to do 
to the place where at the place where he could do all that the most high wanted right he didn't destroy all the Amalekites, right? He didn't do it properly. And they became a curse unto Israel. The first king. Why? Because an, even he, Saul himself, had a heart problem, a heart issue. So you might get the blessing, but it might be a strange blessing. They got the king, but he wouldn't do all the word of the Most High. You got that nice job, but the Most High said, don't go over there. But the job might end up turning out to be a problem for you later on. Might seem nice at first, but the Most High saying, Ah, give some more time to my word. The Most High has cut you down in life in certain ways to give you more time to seek after him and to learn more and to know more, to set you in a place where you can feed his people, where you can dig in and find certain issues that are critical to Israel moving forward from this point where we are in 2016. To shape, help shape the mind of his people some more. But you want to work against how the Most High has cut out certain things out of your life just for a little while right now. But you want to work against it and say, no, I'm going to restructure things the way I want right now because I'm sick of living like this. Sometimes you don't know that sometimes the Most High is boxing you in just for a while for his own strategic reasons. Of course you read of Job being cornered in. He put a fence around Job so this particular excuse me, presence called Satan couldn't do certain things to him but could only do certain other things. But for Job, that fence was his sickness and his monetary loss and so on and the death of his children. Satan got a fence that allowed him not to do certain things more than he wanted to do to Job. But Job's fence was being limited to not do all the things he wanted to do because of his condition. But the Most High was in it. Right? And so Job's life was stripped down. His job was lost, his children was lost, his cattle was lost, and so on. Like you, you, uh, yeah, you, you've lost so much and you can't see that in a sense somewhat of what happened to Job has happened to you. Your life has been stripped down. You've lost all kinds of things. And you never stop to think that the Most High is in this. Oh, it's just because I'm cursed. It's just because I made that bad decision. It's just because whatever. Maybe you didn't do anything so wrong more than any other person. Maybe you did all the right things once you found out that you are supposed to keep the laws and so on, right? Maybe you made all the right changes to follow after the Most High now, according to Torah, and things still go bad. Might not necessarily mean that you have done anything wrong, but maybe the Most High, for His own reasons, are doing certain things in your life to get you into a corner where He wants to train you. It's like when they do in boxing and they put that person in a corner, right? Not because they shouldn't be out more in the, the middle of the ring where they have more freedom to move and to strategize against the opponent. But maybe the trainer is boxing that person into the corner to train them so that they can figure out when the real opponent has you in a corner, how you're going to get out. So the most I was putting you in that spot where things have been shut down from your life to teach you how you should proceed from this point. So sometimes you might push for the blessing like they push for Samuel and it turns out to be a strange blessing, right? Look over here now at Genesis chapter 3 dealing with Adam, verse 18 to 19. This is after they fell, they ate from the supposed fruit. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And by the way, the blessing I'm talking about here, in this case with Adam, is that they were trying to make their own clothes, it seems. But the Most High gave them animal skins, right? Like better clothes than the, the fig leaves, than the, the leaves that they have. So, it seemed to be a blessing, right? And he's going to give them some food now, right? So if you tilt the ground, right? Some food, so they're still going to eat now, even though they're going to be kicked out. 
and it says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So now that they're going to be put out, they don't have access to all this food in the garden. But they're still going to eat. That's still a blessing. They're still going to get food. But it's a strange blessing. And, and the clothing is strange. He's By clothing them, he's taking care of them at a time when they just did something wrong. But it's a strange blessing. Because they get all this blessing set up, put some nicer clothes on them, and uh, give them some food. Say, yeah, if you till the ground, you know what, you're going to get some food. But it's a strange blessing. Because after all that, they're going to have to sweat just to eat that food. In a way, they're getting that food in a way where they didn't have to go through that first in order to eat. Sometimes you can get what you want. But it's a strange blessing. First Samuel chapter 12. Well, actually, yeah, and verse 8 and verse 10. So Samuel is telling them now, When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Most High, then the Most High sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. So he's letting them here know that the Most High worked it out. They didn't have a king. When Joseph went down into Egypt, right? And when they got into problems with e in Egypt. But even though they didn't have a, have a king, the Most High worked it out. No king, but he sent Moses and Aaron. So basically saying, what do you need a king for? Then the Most High showed up when you didn't have a king. He sent people to deliver you. And when they forget, forget the Most High, their power, he sold them into the hand of Sisera. Why? Because they had a heart problem. They forgot the Lord now. Captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. And they cried unto the Most High, and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Most High, and have served Baalim and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. See why they wanted a king? Because they didn't want to have to repent and ask the Most High for deliverance by changing their heart and saying, we have sinned, we're going to stop. They just wanted a king so that they could continue doing whatever. Verse 11, And the Most High sent Jerub, um, Jerubbaal and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelt safe. Samuel is telling them, the Most High is upset over this thing because he worked it out all the time without a king, and now you're pushing for a king just so you can be like the other nations. When Israel is supposed to be different. The Most High wanted to rule, reign over them directly himself, not through some middleman, who himself is going to do whatever he wants when he feels like it. Verse 12 to 13. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Most High, your power, was your king. Now therefore, behold the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Most High had set a king over you. So they got that king. Now if you look at verse 17 and 19 with this king now is it not wheat harvest today i will call unto the most high and he shall send thunder and rain that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great which ye have done in the sight of the most high in asking you a king so they got the blessing but it amounted to wickedness see i told you it you can get what you want sometimes but it's a strange blessing. Yeah, I know you done testify. Look at my job. Look at what. Look at my nice furniture. And you feel, wow, my furniture I used to buy was like four hundred dollars a piece. Now I'm buying furniture that's like a thousand bucks a piece. I got this four thousand dollar piece of furniture, one single piece. But it amounted to wickedness because you did not go the direction the Most I was prompting you to go. So Samuel called unto the Most High, and the Most High sent thunder and rain, and that day 
uh, that day, and all the people greatly feared the Most High and Samuel. Verse 19, And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Most High, thy power. You know, not the Most High, our power, because they're so scared at this time, they felt so cut off, they're like, you pray to him, Samuel, the Most High, your power. That we die not, for we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. So now they've come to the point where they're confessing, just like Samuel had said to them, it is wickedness to be blessed like that. Right? Because of what you pushed for. Now they're confessing, yeah, you're right, it is evil that we got this kind of blessing. Sometimes a blessing might really look like a blessing, but it's a strange blessing. You can get set up in all the ways you wanted. You chose that person, you chose this thing, you chose that job when you knew something was wrong. And later on, you're going to have to come to the place where you realize something is wrong. Some evil has come into my life. And you've got to learn how to repent. I'm just trying to say, sometimes you can get it. But it turns out to be a strange blessing. If you feel that prompting and that good common sense kicking in into your own mind, plus others are sometimes saying, hey, sometimes, you know, just don't run ahead with everything in life so hastily, especially if it's feeling so overwhelmingly good. There are times when that's going to be a good thing from the most high and that's your breakthrough. But you got to use common sense and sometimes learn when something is not a breakthrough. When you figure out that if I take this thing, it will change my life, but I'm going to lose something that's much more valuable to me, you might want to hold back. Even me. I'm in this situation right now. I can make certain moves to change certain things and make certain things better in my life right now. I can make one or two moves that, yeah, will just change things for the better. But I see some other things that I really want. And for the first time in my life, I'm thinking with common sense for my own self. Because I've always lived with someone else making the decisions and telling me, this is how you should do it, that's how you should do it. And end up in disaster. Sometimes it went well for a while and then afterwards I regretted it. I didn't have my own mind. And so now by using my own mind, I'm seeing I can make one or two changes right now that can fix certain things. But when I weigh it and compare it with something on the other side that has more value to me internally in my heart, that would make my life sweeter later on, but I will have less. I've just decided, no way. I will not budge. I will not move right now. I'm going to stay in this situation right where I'm at and allow the most high to work it out. Because now I'm choosing to go through life, not by just simply getting blessed in external things, having more money or something like that. I'm choosing now to get blessed in my heart where I learn more of the Most High. Right? I'm taking some time right now to learn more about who I am, what I'm really about in this life, what's my place in this life, and why I made the decisions and mistakes and choices I did yesteryear. I'm taking some time to figure those things out instead of rushing to get that blessing that I know is dangling, it's waiting for me over there. But I'm like, uh-uh, I'm going to slow down. I moved too fast years ago. And I'm also taking some times in a downtime right now that I'm going through. And seeing the hand of the Most High walk me through and carry me through. When I know the blessing over there that I could have would just have me jump high real fast. Right? But I'm like, no. If I stay right here with the Most High, going in this kind of direction at this pace, not only am I going to learn more about myself and how to make better decisions in life, but I'm also going to learn more of the Most High, His Word, and find a way how to really feed His people and play my part in the kingdom. That's That to me is a much better choice. And I'm just watching the Most High work things out. And I can see down the road the other way that he's going to work things out, it takes longer. So what do I do in this time when things are taking longer? I'm digging into his word and common sense is coming into me more and more because his Torah makes the simple wise. So I'm learning, I'm becoming more wise, right? More smarter. And I'm dealing with some situations right now, talking to some people about certain things in the Bible 
um, and about creation and so on, that had I gone and taken the quick remedy, I would not have had the time that I took to learn these things in order to have those answers for those people to help direct them, right? Towards the Most High. Because some people have some real questions that I've been faced with, things that are stretching me and causing me to grow. Videos that later on I'm going to make that I know a lot of people are going to be glad for, right? But I'm learning them now. Learning to break open the word, right? Because the Most High slowed me down. And instead of resisting and running ahead, I'm like, no, I'm going to go with what the Most High is doing in my life as far as I see and feel it to be. And you know what? Sure, certain things aren't the way I'd like them to be. But for the first time in my life, I am at peace with me. I'm finally at peace because I've learned to slow down and just allow the Most High to work it out. It is my prayer today that you allow the Most High to work it out. Because if you really trust in Him and slow down and read the scripture some more and look around and see how other people work out their issues, some work it out fast, some work it out slower, some are hasty, some are too hasty and all that. If you look at all these things in life and you look at the news and the wars and everything, you will eventually learn it's better to just leave it to the Most High because He'll work it out. Shalom.